When it comes to the topic of gym position, we've seen it all before. The frightening voices, the horrific looks, and the superhuman strength that comes out of people under the influence of demonic spirits. It's a terrifying topic, yet it somehow manages to arouse the interest of Muslims and non-Muslims around the world with videos amassing millions of views online. The practice of removing such evil spirits and treating those who are affected is known as Ruqya, and it's an Islamic form of spiritual healing. It's based on an authentic tradition of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam himself, whereby verses of the Quran would be used to heal those afflicted with sickness, black magic, and evil spirits. However, despite the noble origins of this prophetic sunnah, the practice has recently found its way into the hands of fraudulent spiritual healers. Definitely, there's a lot of exaggeration. There's a lot of people that claim knowledge of things that they have no foundation of. There is a lot of use and abuse of people's ignorance and weakness and lack of connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. The issue was recently the subject of a press release by the Australian National Imams Council, warning the wider public to be cautious of corrupt spiritual healers feigning religious authority. One Path Network has undertaken an investigation into the malpractice of the Ruqya industry, and what we have uncovered will not only shock you, but will leave you deeply disturbed. Our first victim claims to have been set up with a spiritual healer after her sister suspected she was possessed by an evil spirit. She herself denied such suspicions, but nevertheless met with the spiritual healer. This is what she says happened on her first meeting. Introduced himself with his name and asked for my name and sister, would you lie down for me just so I can, you know, start my work on you straight away so we don't have to waste any time. And I laid down on the couch. I asked my sister to bring me a blanket because I felt uncomfortable the fact that I was lying down on the couch and he was sitting right on top of my head. With his own bare hands, he put it on my neck and he gently first. So then I felt like he needed to press harder to make it look like something is wrong for me to react. So he choked me and he choked me hard. Well, I remember that's how much he choked me. I reached the point where I couldn't eat or even drink water. Video footage obtained by the victim confirms she was indeed physically abused and choked. The video footage is too distressing to show. Our second victim also claims to have been set up to meet with a spiritual healer. This is what happened. He was saying to my husband because that, that's it, he was convinced I had a jinn in me. So we need to take him out. We thought that the next thing he was going to do, he's going to read Quran. So he did. He, so he put his hand on my head and he started to read Quran. That was like, okay, how's it like, even my husband's face went a bit confused, like, how's the sheikh touching me? And then, you know, we thought, okay, sheikh, he's a rocky, so it's okay. Um, slowly, slowly, his hand started going down and he started um, banging my shoulders, like, really, really hard. He started really, really hitting my back. When he started hitting me, I, I was, like, in pain, obviously, so I was screaming. So then he grabbed his, um, his hands and he started choking me like full on like choking, choking, like my face changed colour, everything, like I felt like I was going to pass out. Our third victim details a story that happened when she was 12 years old at the hands of a spiritual healer. Her account unveils horrific details of both psychological and physical abuse. A word of warning, some may find the following interview extremely distressing. First he started off with Qur'an, Qur'an and then I don't know, I, I don't know what happened. He told me, told them lie, lie her down on the couch, strap, like tie her up and um, he began to choke me and um, using his hand as a knife on my neck to get, me, get, it, get something to come out. And then he began to then hit me on my knees. I was strapped in a house, screaming, I'm begging somebody to come and help me. He was, he would go and come to, to guy, try and get it out of me. And then I became psychologically unstable for that two weeks. Um, he would he would instruct them to to let me drink oil, this oil that used to burn inside of me, and I used to scream from pain that it's burning, and he goes, "That's good, it's dying." And then he he made them shower me, um, and he was just he always hitting me. At 12 years old, I was getting abused by someone I didn't know. The abuse she endured so long ago still deeply affects her to this very day. After that day, I used to get severe anxiety attacks. I used to go to the hospital every week from anxiety attacks. I'm on medication now to stop my anxiety because to, this, to now I get them. It led to that I, used, I once I, um, 
open the door on the Hume Highway to jump out. I just wanted to die. What does the condition call it? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it relates to the trauma the person has experienced that can put them at risk of losing their life or experience someone else losing their life. It can impact on person's life in the future as well. They continue to have high anxiety level with uh, flashbacks and nightmares related to their experience in the past that significantly impact their normal functioning. Account after account revealed horrific stories of abuse at the hands of so-called spiritual healers. However, throughout the course of our interviews, a common theme kept reoccurring, and that was the naivety of family members in placing their unconditional trust in spiritual healers. It was as though the appearance of the spiritual healer, who dressed in an Islamic garb and spoke a few words of Arabic, was enough to convince family members that he was a person of religious authority, despite his clear, grievous violations of Islamic law. Sheikh, what is the Islamic ruling on healing a patient during Ruqya treatment? Another malicious practice employed by these corrupt individuals was to convince family members that the victim was not in pain while they operated, and rather that it was the demon or the evil spirit that was suffering. This deceptive technique further manipulated family members and led to the victim feeling abandoned and helpless at the hands of their abusers. I wasn't aware of what's happening anymore because I would get so exhausted of him choking me where literally my jaw popped out of line, like out of place. And it's like, I'm not hurting her sister, I'm not hurting her, but it's the jinn inside of her. And then he would get honey and he would just like shove it all the way down my throat and he's like, look, see, she's reacting because the shaitan doesn't like honey. No, if you shove that spoon in anyone's mouth the way you're shoving it in my mouth, anyone's going to react in the same way. I used to beg him to stop. He wouldn't. He said it's not her. And I used to believe it wasn't me. But I know it was me because I used to feel it. And he said she's not meant to feel anything. But I did. I felt everything and nobody believed me. It made me, it made me doubt my own words. To make matters worse, in some instances, the spiritual healer would be in seclusion with a female patient without the presence of any mahram or male relative. This not only contravenes Islamic guidelines, but in this context, also opens the door to potential sexual harassment. For a female to go to a male raqi, it's a method that's mentioned in fiqh, you know? It's not just an open ground like that. If there's a female raqi, a female sister that does this, then it becomes uh, unlawful for you to go to a male, especially if he's gonna, unfortunately, many of them, they, they maybe touch. I dare say hundreds of stories I personally faced of people that felt abused and used, but it's very, very embarrassing to reveal. Another common theme amongst all victims was the absence of any medical evaluation prior to spiritual treatment. There is no doubt within Islam that people are susceptible to being affected by evil spirits and black magic. However, by the same token, we do not deny the importance and necessity of first evaluating whether or not one has a valid medical condition that can explain one's sickness. A lot of people that, cl that work in this field they don't even know how to actually differentiate between the different sicknesses. So if someone is mentally ill, he's actually mentally ill, the Raqi does not know how to differentiate. So everything now became jinn, 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 possession to the extent that everyone, everyone around us now is claiming or actually considering that maybe I am possessed. Mental illness is more common than we think it is in the community. And often people don't seek help. It's important 
to find out more about it and if you think you are suffering from it and your functioning is being affected by it, it's important to seek help. The truth is there is nothing new about what is happening today. For centuries, corrupt individuals have manipulated and abused religion to achieve their own corrupt personal agenda. It's an old business that is marketed upon the vulnerabilities of people. It's becoming ridiculous and it's getting out of hand, especially when we know that there is some, it's becoming lucrative as financial gain behind the Raqi doing whatever he is doing. And it comes in different formats and, you know, some people ask for money directly and it's not cheap, you know. And some people, they, they say, I don't take money, but then he sells you the water that he read Fatiha on 200 times and he, he, makes, he, he makes a gain or a profit from it. But he doesn't ask for money. He's like, you can donate as much as you want and whatever you want, but I'm paying for the honey and it's not cheap. I'm paying for this, like, he's asking indirect. But then he tells you, I don't take money, I do it for what shall I'm not stupid. You are asking for more than money. Roughly per session, we walked out, um, whatever we put in the donation box was a couple of hundred dollars. And every single time we would walk out with at least $360 worth of things. It was devastating to realise that what was once used to heal is now being used to harm. However, what matters today is that we raise enough awareness to bring such tainted practices to an end and revive the true prophetic sunnah of Ruqya that befits its noble purposes of achieving spiritual healing for those that are affected. أفضل ما يمكن تقديمه للمجتمع هو تعليم الناس الركة الشرعية وهي سهلة الميسورة لا تحتاج لتعقيد القرآن الكريم كلام الله كله شفاء ورحمة كما قال تعالى وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين اقرأ أي سورة أي آية بنية الشفاء يشفيك الله عاجلا أو آجلا Muslims should never forget that the strength of Ruqya will always stem from the Qur'an itself and not from the one reciting it. In fact, by constantly surrounding ourselves with the Book of Allah and reciting the prophetic supplications against evil, we will ensure that we are sufficiently protected from the harms of any jinn or evil spirit. The strength is not in the Raqi. The strength is in the actual Ruqya. There's no difference between the Raqi reading Qur'an on you and you reading Quran for yourself, or your husband reading it for you, or your wife reading it for you, or your mother for her children. The Prophet ﷺ taught us, read Surah Al-Baqarah in your house, do the adhkar of the morning and the evening, things like at al kursi before you sleep, they are very, very effective. Healing will always come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and we shouldn't place too much reliance upon the spiritual healer to the point that they're able to take advantage of vulnerable members of the community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our community from all those who have brought harm and may the sunnah of our beloved messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be safeguarded and protected from all those who have abused it. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.